uh, like to start with Mr. Sita Raman uh, Transport Commissioner Andhra Pradesh. I mean, Andhra Pradesh has been seen as one of the most aggressive, uh, you know, adopters of technology. Uh, if I can understand from you, sir, you know, in terms of, you know, some of the initiatives what your department has taken uh, in terms of um, uh, adopting emerging technologies. Oh, thank you so much, uh, first, for being calling us over here and all this. So AP has been always, since quite some time, has taken up, but it's always has been bits and pieces. The holistic integration has not yet taken place, but I'll just keep myself to the transportation department. In the last uh, almost uh, three years, the entire services of the transportation department have been taken online. So except for the fitness certificate, mm -hmm. Uh, everything is online. So uh, 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 the citizen, any customer, everything is purely online. Uh, so they can use various citizen-centric uh, services, portals to log on to the transportation department, including their registration, their learner licenses, the renewal of licenses, the payment of life taxes, quarterly taxes. Everything has been shifted. There are issues, I'm not saying there are not issues, there are issues, issues keep coming up. We keep trying to address them through the service provider. But primarily, what I have found is that as long as whatever is the technology solution which you provide for the e-governance, it has to be useful to the end user. And here in this case, the citizen. If it's not found to be useful, then obviously the solution is going to fail. Uh, and over a period of time, this solution which uh, the transportation department has been done, and it was done by one of my predecessors, Mr. Balasubramanyam, he's now also an IPs officer. Mm -hmm. So he has also integrated with uh, Aadhaar, Vahan, Sarathi, the insurance, all the other agencies. So the only challenges which we face are because the citizen is not able to, he finds our solution sometimes slow because we are not able, they are not able to access the Aadhaar because Aadhaar solution is slower. So whenever you have this kind of multi uh, integration with various other solutions, there is bound to be some problems, some issues. But I'm sure in the next three to five years, all these things also would get sorted out. So all that we can say is that it has been useful and it has become a greater success because primarily the end user has been able to find it useful. Sure. Only for the fitness certificate, he obviously has to bring it and obviously it has to be a physical inspection. So this is something which has happened in Andhra Pradesh in the last three years and we are trying to now basically strengthen the entire thing and uh, try to overcome the resistance which the transport department officials keep trying to, because obviously they have lost their uh, whatever power or whatever you can call it over the hold over the people. But over a period of time, I'm sure this is also going to be addressed. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, now I'd like to come to Ajay. Uh, you know, I'll take turns and kind of choose so that, uh, you know, we have far more interaction between the industry and, uh, you know, the private sector. Uh, um, Ajay, how have you seen uh, the evolution? Uh, you've been a veteran in this industry. You've seen how government departments have been functioning, evolving. Um, would you recollect any examples which has kind of surprised you or wow, you know, you say, okay, this is a great, you know, implementation or a, you know, this has really surprised me. Any examples would you like to relate? Yeah, sure. So, one of the areas that uh, comes to my mind related to transportation in a way is uh, the intelligent traffic management uh, uh, service that is being looked at by almost every state today. All of us know that uh, there are um, crossings or red lights in every city. And, and you don't know how much time it's going to consume for vehicles to pass because they rely on manual shifting of the lights from red to green. By virtue of the intelligent traffic management, you can actually figure out what is the load of traffic, maybe at peak hours, maybe not at peak hours, and accordingly change the lights. Very simplest of examples, but imagine what that will do. It will save us you know, I don't know how many uh, liters of petrol or diesel mm -hmm. and, and that will also help us on a pollution front uh, big time. Sure. Now there are, uh, in addition to that, um, solutions being looked at, for instance, if there are say accidents that happen, 
the cameras can take up the pictures of the vehicle, including the registration numbers, and immediately, you know, action can be taken. So, in a country like ours, I think uh, we need to have these kind of solutions, which will automatically enforce, you know, a peaceful way of vehicular right. traffic on the roads. Sure. I'd like to now come to uh, Sarvesh, uh, you know. Can you, uh, Sarvesh, cite examples from, you know, Jharkhand, um, or from your own experience, uh, some examples which you know you think are great examples of uh, effective e-governance. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I would like to say means uh, Jharkhand was created out of Bihar, and Bihar was not famous for good thing, but famous for some other things, and that created an image uh, something which was negative. So that reputation was carried over to the Jharkhand also. But I tell you, you know, by using the ICD technology, I cannot give you only one example. There are a number of examples from where we can see that there's a lot of improvement, right? If I talk from, uh, uh, means uh, because of this technology, if I say the efficiency has increased, transparency has increased, and services are being delivered door to door and uh, from anywhere, anytime. So if I take an example from means various departments, for example, uh, if I talk about land records, Land records department, there were a lot of embezzlements in the land records. And uh, our same land or same flat was being sold again and again uh, to many persons. So this, this is one of the biggest things because uh, persons are investing a lot of money. Whatever they have earned in their life, they are investing either in lands or purchasing a flat. But now this has been controlled. Similarly, the another uh, department, if I talk about the colleges and universities where the admission has been now online, counseling online, so this is again a uh, field where the, everything has become very, very transparent. Third department, if I talk about the food and civil supplies department, where the means PDS system, you know, a uh, lot of hassles, a lot of problems, a lot of embezzlements, and the real person who was supposed to get the benefits, they were not getting. But now, because of using this technology and whatever so many means, uh, uh, means are there, so the, there is a lot of transparency in that also, and the benefits are being reached to the right person to a great extent. So these are um, few of the many examples where uh, the improvement has, uh, has been there in Jharkhand also. And I tell you one thing, uh, whatever it may be, it has a uh, legacy of a really uh, bad reputation, but uh, in the IT field, it has done really wonderfully and it is progressing in a very, very nice way. And we have a lot of application and a lot of services being delivered through ICT. And being uh, these benefits are going directly to the beneficiaries, whether it's uh, payments or whether it's uh, admission or issuing certificate. Everything is online. And the system has improved a lot. And there's a lot of transparency and efficiency in the Jharkhand also right now. Thank fantastic, you so much. Fantastic. Now I'd like to come to Raghavendra. Uh, you know, Raghavendra, analytics has been a big, big use case in terms of, uh, you know, deployment, analyzing. I mean, almost all the government departments cite uh, using analytics to curb fraud, uh, increasing efficiency. Um, and obviously, I think your organization also has a lot of examples relevant to India. Can you share some of these to, you know, our audience? Yes, absolutely. And because you mentioned uh, prevention of fraud, which is a considerably large area, uh, I think, I think, a lot of states basically use uh, SAS's fraud, fraud prevention solution, which effectively uses a combination of techniques in order to detect potential fraud. The applicability of solutions like these are not just uh, restricted to departments like tax. It's basically any revenue department. In fact, right here in the state of Rajasthan, uh, SAS's solution is effectively used by five key uh, revenue departments, which is commercial tax, which is excise, it's used in uh, registration, which is land records and registration, it's used in uh, transport. Um, for that matter, in fact, sir, uh, we are also, uh, uh, AP is also a SaaS customer specifically for uh, prevention of uh, fraud in uh, transport to a large extent. I think uh, a lot of states are leading the way when it comes to this. In fact, some of the very uh, unique use cases that we've dealt with, and that was also with the state of AP, uh, being a considerably debt-ridden state, obviously interest liability payouts are considerably high for the state. Uh, the state at, at some point basically approached us to say if there is possibility of building a, a debt optimization model in order to identify what debts could they basically swap 
into from the existing debt portfolio that they basically have in order to make sure that they are able to optimize it and make sure that the interest liabilities go down. Again, an extremely unique business problem. Uh, seems solvable, but the moment you apply analytics to the whole thing, uh, the ball game completely changes. Because debt is a factor of how many tranches it is basically released in. Some debts uh, cannot be swapped out of. Some debts can be. There are multiple different, and interest rates obviously vary from time to time. Uh, hence, what is required here is basically a complex mathematical constraint-based model, uh, basically using techniques like linear programming, et cetera, in order to build it up. I mean, those are examples where states have gone um, levels higher in the use of analytics in a very, very big way. So would you compare them to be um, as equal to the global standards, or do you think we are... Oh, you would actually be surprised yeah. uh, to know that not many developed countries used analytics as effectively as we do in some of the states and central ministries here in this country. Uh, as SAS, uh, our customers do ask us, give me use cases that you do in the US. And there are times when I go back to the US and ask for use cases, and I start telling them what we're doing here, uh, they're really amazed of some of the things that we're doing, um, which, is, which is fantastic. Uh, a simple example is one state once approached me, and, and so it is the state of Andhra Pradesh again, right, who approached me and said, is there a way you can actually build a framework to measure the quality of education of the state? We have built platforms in the United States in order to build alternative measurement systems in order to improve student performance over a period of time. But that's at an individual level, which is relevant, important. But a state wanting to measure something like quality of education in the form of an index is an extremely complex thing, right? And those are the kind of requirements that we hear back here in India and when we sometimes go back uh, to our offices in the US and ask them if they've come up with something like that, they love what we're talking about because it's exceptionally unique and forward thinking. Sure, very good example, sir. Now, before I come to Mr. Rao, uh, Atulri uh, Ramarao, you know, because I want to reserve the best for the last hour, you know, I've got some good examples of what come, come out of him. Uh, I'd like to go across to Mr. Prashant Bhatia, Vice President uh, from Vertiv. Uh, you know, the infrastructure is also equally important. Uh, we have been talking about smarter data centers, uh, you know, saving of energy. How relevant do you think it's in a country like India? Yeah, so, um, uh, let me tell you, the infrastructure is the backbone of any application that runs. So if you don't have a right infrastructure, I think whatever intelligence you build up in the uh, application, it, it will not help anybody actually. And we have invested heavily into this. I still remember, I think the first technology Sabha, which I, first not, but very initial stage in the uh, Goa when I participated, that point of time the states were talking about state data centers. And the amount of racks, what they were, that point of time, were discussing 30, 40, 50 racks for which they were to build up a complete infrastructure. Today, you know, we have actually created a, a technology where you don't even need to invest in the physical infrastructure. We have these intelligent racks which comes populated with entire foolproof uh, mm -hmm. uh, equipments. You just need to place it inside a physical, you don't have to create a room. And everything, is, uh, all intelligence that is required to manage an infrastructure, including, uh, you know, biometric, including your securities, including your, uh, you know, power and ambience, everything is built inside it. So that not only, you know, helps you to deploy your physical infrastructure in record time, uh, but the, at the same time, it also helps you to, you know, it gives you the flexibility to even enhance uh, in future if you want to add on servers. So that, that is where, you know, the entire physical infrastructure technology is, uh, you know, moving. If you, I, I'm not sure if a uh, few of you have visited our, uh, you know, stall, you will see a single rack solution. Now, this is basically at the edge, edge level. Edge level, when I say, uh, you know, when we talk about, you know, a point of action, where, you know, where you, will, you say that, you know, when you deploy some uh, intelligence at a core level, it takes time for a person down the level at, a, you know, Gram Panchayat or other places to, you know, basically run the application. But if you have a core at somewhere and, you know, specific edge at a point of action, it actually helps. So, uh, so that is where, you know, we have actually invested quite a lot in physical infrastructure. That the technology has changed quite a lot. Yeah. Sure. Um, um, I'd like, now like to come to Mr. Um, uh, Ramarao. You know, when we're talking off stage, uh, you know, I was just a reminder of an example. Like, I talked about the example of StackU, which uses, uh, you know, AI and a combination of cameras plus AI to find out missing, uh, find out criminals. 
Now the same technology as an example can be used for, you know, uh, finding missing children. So, uh, in fact, the same technology has been used by the same company and I think a lot of com other companies also to find out now your Aadhaar um, and you can kind of uh, use the same technology to find out missing children. Uh, now I was talking to Mr. Rao, now he also has, I think, many such examples where they're using a combination of IoT, AI, and obviously uh, CCTV cameras to, you know, bring about real change in, you know, how public services are delivered. So I'd like to, Mr. Rao, to elaborate. Good evening. Uh, I represent AP State Fibernet Limited. It's the fiber infrastructure company of Government of Andhra Pradesh. Uh, we have built the uh, fiber infrastructure across the uh, entire state. And uh, this infrastructure is, uh, is not only for the entertainment, education, and the uh, surveillance. This has also has an applications available for the analytic, through analytics, providing the real-time governance. So to tell you an example, this FiberNet uh, uh, is a program which has been in, uh, initiated in the uh, last two years. Uh, it has been, the network is uh, complete and the services are being provided to the triple play services to every uh, household in the state of Andhra Pradesh. Today we are account is about 10 lakh customers online. Uh, we'll be, we are providing triple play services, the IPTV, uh, broadband, and a landline telephone to every house at 149 rupees per month. This is what is the initiative of the government of Andhra Pradesh to provide the connectivity to every household. In addition to this, using the same infrastructure, we are also providing, we are also providing 20,000 cameras, uh, CCTV cameras across the state to um, help the police department uh, for the, the, the traffic violations and the crime, stopping the crime and other, in, in, in using the same cameras, uh, the other departments, we are using some analytics to provide some information wherever the cameras installed on the roads, at the junctions, the quality of the roads, the, the, the analytics uh, being utilized, analogic, is it will identify if there is a change in the maybe a small pothole maybe a, some sort of a, a damage to the road, which happens. Generally, uh, usually departments use the patrolling to identify these damages being done. Once the damage is uh, at a, a smaller limit, it is easy to uh, repair it immediately, uh, rather than waiting for the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the patrolling team to identify and then do the re repairs. So the analytics we are using, the cameras which are at the junctions will also not look at the traffic, it will also look at the condition of the road. If there is a change in the condition of the road uh, from the last frame to this frame, then immediately alerts will go to real-time governance centers. The real-time governance centers, every district we have provided one district uh, uh, real-time governance center in addition to the state real-time governance centers. The alerts will be, the, the stakeholders of the government departments will sit in the real-time governance centers and at the moment there is a, some sort of a damage to the road, the, uh, the, the, the concerned departments like R&B or Panchayati Raj, wherever, I mean, whichever is the area of jurisdiction, they will be, uh, alerts will go there and the departments will take the, similarly, municipal corporations, the dustbin overflow can be immediately uh, identified and alerts will go to the respective department. Similarly, graffiti on the walls, uh, this also uh, will be identified. It's just analytics using the last frame to this frame. If there is a change to that frame, immediately alerts will go to the respective departments. Similarly, if you talk about crowd gatherings, suddenly some crowd gathering and all, this the alerts will also go to them. Stray dog means, no, I mean, uh, the, the uh, vehicles parking at no parking place. These are the things which he will try to help the various departments uh, to uh, identify and utilize the, uh, the alerts and take corrective action immediately. This is one of the application which we are, I mean, same infrastructure using with different departments and this is effective utilization, that's what we feel. This is one of the examples which you are utilizing. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. So I think this is a perfect example of the ASIS and to be straight, you know. So the ASIS straight, when you compare the ASIS straight to the to be straight, and you find the difference in automated analytics issue. Uh, so do you use the cloud uh, very much for this or is it on-premise? 
Today we are using it on the on-premises. A data center is on the on-premises and the information is gathered. Mm -hmm. And probably when the, now today it is only, uh, we, we are on the start, maybe about, uh, we are utilizing it for the last two, three months. So probably when the, no, the, uh, the, the, the data gathering and then analytics happens, it obviously it has to go to the cloud. Sure. The plans sure. are run to the cloud. See. Now I have, I mean, certain time limits, obviously, as you can see it on the screen here. But what I would like, uh, all the panelists, I can, you can, anyone can take the shot at this question. Uh, you know, normally nobody wants to be the guine uh, guinea pig in terms of adopting emerging tech. You know, so for example, if blockchain, they'll say, okay, give me a reference case. I, I think it's true for the vendors also. Whenever uh, you approach any client for, you know, deployment, they say, okay, show me a use case in India or show me a use case where it's actually working. Uh, uh, this question is for both, uh, you know, the private sector guys, uh, the vendors, uh, and e even uh, the industry experts here who are sitting here. How do you really, uh, my first question is to, obviously, the industry experts first. How do you really convince the management when there's no reference case or there's no use case of a deployment or an ROI case proven? Uh, to invest in a technology. So if I can start with uh, you, Mr. Amarao, again, uh, the business case for emerging tech, uh, can you, maybe two or three best practice what you think can convince the management? Basically, the whatever the requirement, it has to come from the, uh, the, the field only. Because looking at the problem, trying to address the problem, trying to find the solution, then comes the industry. The, the problem will be posed. The solution is to be given by the industry. So basically, uh, for providing a better infrastructure and better, better uh, needs, uh, it has to come from the field. The people have to think about what best can be done uh, to the uh, public or to the, uh, they say. So then bring that. Uh, maybe some sort of a group discussions, maybe some sort of a brainstorming sessions within the, uh, uh, the, the government and the public. There some things should come. So once you get it, then you frame it out. What is that you are thinking? And then this has to be posted. And the next level of brainstorming session will be industry to the government, with the government. If this uh, uh, happens continuously, this should not be viewed as a um, I mean, what do you call a profit-based? Um, uh, uh, the industry should be open up and come to the. Uh, okay, now you mentioned a very interesting point. Uh, you know the industry. So I'm uh, uh, requesting all. Uh, if I can start, uh, can I ask you first to respond and then ask Ajay to respond? Yeah. I think uh, with most of a project of this nature. The question is never on the qualitative benefits. Everybody understands the qualitative benefits of advanced analytics. Everybody understands the qualitative benefits of artificial intelligence. What it basically comes down to is uh, spend versus benefit, basically. right? So if a government is going to shell out a certain amount of money uh, to a company, what is the net result financially that the organization is going to get, which is the true uh, question to be asked. As, as we approach it uh, slightly, slightly scientifically, if you ask me, there are methodical tools that are used, there are key metrics that are put in place in order to help uh, our clients evaluate what is the business benefit of using our software. And I think that's very important. It's less about spending less or using more of software. It's more about what value does it bring to the table to the government. Uh, that should be the measuring point to decide what is the money that you should be paying for software companies like us, sure. basically. Yeah. Yeah. No, problem here, uh, what you have to understand is government cannot, I mean, I mean identify one uh, agency because of the framework, reform the, before, uh, because of the regulations. We cannot identify somebody and then bring him in the table and then try to understand or try to study and then give that. That cannot happen. So only thing is, it's only based on the discussions. It should be open discussions. It cannot be a single sources and then a government to spend money. Government doesn't have money as such. So <laughs> government has to provide, <laughs> government has to provide the necessities for the citizens. This is absolutely within the sure. framework. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this. I, I, I would like to add something to it. it means, uh, 
first of all, the most important thing is the viability of a project. Means uh, if I give an example of a lot of uh, proposals come for the digital smart classes. If I talk about my state, so I have received so many proposals for the digital smart classes. Means it will be online classes covering the whole state. The project cost will be, be something like 500 crores. But the question comes, connectivity. It's not like the, you are installing the infrastructure in all the villages and blocks, but where is the connectivity? So before investing into any project, viability is also an important aspect. We have to look into the viability of the project, whether is it really going to happen? We are going to establish so many points where we can have a two-way connectivity, video conferencing, everything. But where is the connectivity to provide this kind of uh, facility? So viability is again an important thing. Secondly comes, what is ever, whenever we are just thinking about any projects, so we also look into the cost-benefit analysis also. Means how much we are going to invest and how much benefit it is going to give the citizens or to the department. And uh, that is also an uh, important aspect. It's, technology is there. It is going to give you efficiency. It's going to give you transparency. It's going to reduce your uh, corruption. Everything is good. But we have to look into how much we are going to invest and how much we are going to benefit out of it. So there are so many these aspects. Until this really going to look into all these aspects, it's difficult to take a decision. So everything, and then comes whether we are going for a one company or a multiple company or through tendering process or a nomination process. Those are then, the, then those things come yeah. into picture. What I like about this panel is I think this question has brought a smile to everybody's faces. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a very, um, you know, uh, challenging question for uh, everybody, but I think uh, uh, talking on behalf of the industry, I think gone are the days when uh, OEMs have to look at an IT problem. You know, those days are gone. It is a business problem. It's a business need. That's the first point I think all of us need to understand. The second thing is, you know, I would like to quote an example of UID Aadhaar since from, from afternoon we've been hearing a lot about it. And it is getting used extensively across the board. You know, from the conceptualization stage that India wants to have something of that sort to the situation today where we are using it like, you know, even for securing a mobile SIM, it has traversed a very long journey, right? So, so whether it was from the initial days to collect the data of people right from the, I remember the initial days when simple laptops were given, there were separate uh, fingerprint uh, readers and so on and so forth, to the UID Aadhaar kits which were developed over a period of time, right? That is one part. The second part is within the UID Aadhaar also, now you may talk of it using that data in different ways, but imagine how does UID Aadhaar manage it for them their own selves? It's not going to be easy. You know, such a huge vast amount of data being processed at multiple different levels, the security of it, mm -hmm. the, the management of it, and making sense out of the, the data that was collected in a way which is utilizable, right, is not easy. So, so coming to the conclusion, I think that the business idea has to come from the government body in terms of what is it that you would want to do? What kind of services would you want to render, right? What is the e citizen services that you would want to uh, uh, have in your own state or, or any organization that you're representing? Leave that thought with us, and I can assure you, we will be able to come back with a plan in terms of what is the best way of, you know, solving that, uh, that, that need. I think I've really run out of time. Uh, I can probably take one or two questions from the audience, uh, if, 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 if anybody wants to ask. Okay. I think everybody has understood this completely, so I, I don't think there are any questions. <laughs> Uh, but uh, like I said, this, this is a topic which probably has enough uh, material to go or debate for, you know, another, say, 45 to minutes to one hour. But uh, like, uh, like I said, I've run out of time and being the host, I really can't run out of time. And I have to honor, like I've been requesting each speaker to stick to the timelines. Uh, uh, so without much uh, debate, I think uh, it was a fantastic discussion. A lot of insights, uh, though it was short and insightful. But uh, uh, thank you, dear panelists, for sparing your time. Um, just like you to pose for a group photograph. Uh, 